How many times a day do you think you hear or see a crime? Whether it's on the TV, on social media, or even if it's a fictional crime in a TV show or a film, we are surrounded by it. Stories of crime, and also the solving of crimes, have always interested society. And that may explain why a character like Sherlock Holmes is still so popular today. Reading about crimes and how they are solved may interest us, as it allows us to feel the emotional fear, however in a controlled surrounding. We feel excited by the threat and distress because we know it's not real, making us feel reassured at the end when the crime is solved and we can go to sleep feeling safe. We may also enjoy crime fiction stories like this because we get to play detective too and figure out who done it. So Arthur Conan Doyle stories provide this for Victorian audience during a time where the interest in crime fiction first began. He took this fascination of his readers and created the Sherlock Holmes stories the sign of force second in his series of novels. I'll be looking at the context of the sign of four and how it links to the main themes of the novel, evil and justice, Victorian fear, and the empire and imperialism. The first factor we'll look at is evil and justice. It is important to know about crime in the 1800s before we look at how Conan Doyle presents this theme. So, society was changing because of the industrial revolution. More people were moving from the countryside to London for employment and opportunities, and this brought with it a huge divide between the rich and poor. The Industrial Revolution only brought riches for a few. The poor lived in overcrowded and inadequate conditions. Theft became one of the most common crimes, and we see this in the sign of four, as the main focus is the theft of the treasure and the murders that are committed in order to obtain it. While some people stole for material gain and greed, many stole for survival and to avoid starving to death. Regardless, all were labelled criminals and looked down upon or feared by the middle and upper classes, which we'll expand on later. Some called the lower classes the criminal classes and just saw them as lazy and dishonest. Cheap, sensationalised literature like Penny Dreadfuls made this stereotype worse. The lower classes were only known for drug and alcohol abuse and the higher classes believed this contributed to criminals committing crimes and having broken homes. <laughs> Has this stowed up changed today? I'll leave you to answer that. In The Sign of Four, Doyle plays on this stereotype and casts a working class, wooden stumped, angry Jonathan Small as the antagonist and his loyal, little black, distorted featured, savage accomplice Tonga to commit murder in the novel. Evil is presented through both characters, however, particularly through Tonga as he's the one who murders Bartholomew Shorto, much to Jonathan Small's anger. Justice is served when Tonga is killed and Jonathan Small's arrested. Small gets a little justice at the end as he is told that he will not be charged for the death of Shorto. Showing that, as a detective, Holmes shows fairness and serves not to punish Small for a crime he didn't commit. However, the death of Tonga would probably be favoured by most as the punishment for murder in Victorian England was death. Ideas of justice can also be seen through Mary Morstan, as Thaddeus Sholto tracks her down to admit the injustice of his father's actions when he kept the treasure to himself and the facts about how her father died a secret. At the end of the novel, all characters involved in the theft of Agra Treasure are punished in some way for their involvement, leaving the reader satisfied. Now, we will move on to the theme of Victorian fear and return to the idea of the fear of the working criminal class and the foreignness of characters like Tonga. For centuries, people of colour have been seen as inferior or dangerous. This idea is particularly significant even today. Look at what is going on in the world currently. Brexit and Trump have highlighted racial and religious tensions, with more people having to leave their homes because of fear of violence and death in their own country, and this has only led to the fear of some people in more western countries as they believe their way of life is being threatened. Many opinions are misjudged and are taken from misinformed media, which is also shown in the sign of four. Sherlock Holmes refers to a published book to look upon as the very latest authority to help his and Watson understanding of Tonga's culture and what dangers they may need to be aware of. The volume refers to the Andaman people as naturally hideous, having large, misshapen heads, small, 
fierce eyes and distorted features. Their feet and hands are described as being remarkably small. So intractable and fierce are they that all the efforts of the British officials have failed to win them over in any degree. They are also described as always being a terror to shipwreck crews, braining their survivors with their stone-headed clubs or shooting them with their poison arrows. And also they enjoy cannibal feasts after their massacres. Well, the betrayal of this culture is clearly negative and presents them as animals thus creating fear for any Victorian reader who would only obtain their knowledge through books such as these. It's interesting to see these alternative facts expressed by Watson later on in the novel when Tonga is killed. When seeing Tonga he says that it straightened itself into a little black man, the smallest I have ever seen, with a great misshapen head and a shock of tangled dishevelled hair. He goes on to call him a distorted creature with eyes that glowed and burned and thick lips writhed back from his teeth and having an animal fury. As you can see, some of his wording, such as distorted, came straight from the published work read to him by Holmes earlier on in the novel. It doesn't come as a surprise that Watson is told by Holmes to fire if he raises his hand and when Tonga is killed, Doyle writes that Holmes smiled at it and shrugged his shoulders in his easy fashion. This sounds awfully familiar to some incidents we've heard over time in America, showing that the fear of people of colour has not changed. Furthermore, the lower classes were also feared by the middle and upper classes, and in the novel, Doyle shows this through the description of them. He ensures that they speak differently to the other characters, using a different dialect to Holmes and the other main characters to show their lack of education. Bartholomew Sholto's doorman and prizefighter, Mr McMurdo is described as having twinkling, distrustful eyes and roared when he spoke with excitement and also having a protruding face. The protruding face can link to the snout of an animal and the roaring can link to a lion. Again, like Tonga, showing the lower classes to be animalistic. The dirty and ragged little street Arabs, the Baker Street regulars, are also seen as being loud with their clatter of their high voices and a tumultuous entry. Doyle's portrayal of both the lower classes and people of colour would play on the existing fears of his Victorian reader. The fact that the murder and thefts happen at night would also add to this dread. The last thing we'll touch on is the empire and imperialism. At first, Britain, through the Honourable East India Company, worked with India to trade goods such as spices, textiles and jewels. However, with their success, things soon changed. They became greedy, and more than just a trading company, they became a political one. Britain realised they could capitalise on their people instead. They created an army of over 200,000 men, with Indian troops helping Britain control their empire and military power in India. Britain soon took over India, making laws and raising their taxes, exploiting the Indian people. This caused famine and other problems for the people of India, leading to the Indian mutiny and troops being sent from London to tackle the problem. The East India Company was ended, however Parliament remained and took full control. We see this idea of the British taking advantage and letting their greed rule in the sign of four. Firstly, we see through the stealing of the treasure, which was from India. It's interesting how Jonathan Small believes the treasure is rightfully his, even though it's not, reflecting the same ideals of the British Empire. Furthermore, Small also takes advantage of Tonga, his loyal assistant. He states that little Tonga was a faithful mate, same way that Indian troops were loyal to the Empire. Furthermore, he explains how he earned a living at this time by exhibiting poor Tonga at fairs and other such places as the Black Cannibal conveying the attitudes of the Victorian public towards people of colour. They were an attraction whose only purpose was for entertainment. It's interesting how the rebellion was called the Indian Mutiny, because mutiny is defined as an open rebellion against proper authorities, especially by soldiers or sailors against their officers. Was this a mutiny? The Indian troops trying to take back control or was rightfully theirs. Once again, can you draw any correlation to society's attitudes to minorities today and Victorian England? I can think of a few. So now we've covered the main themes and contextual factors that you need to know for the sign 4. 
why don't you attempt the following question? Respond to what you've learned. Explore how Conan Doyle presents negative ideas of race and class in Victorian England. Remind yourself of the assessment objectives and make a plan before you start. Don't forget to have a range of short quotations to embed within your response and support your points. Analyse Doyle's use of language and structure to present race and class and how this links to Victorian society. How does this affect a Victorian reader and a reader today? If you would like an extract and an AQA exam style question, visit my shop to download. I'll put the link down below. Any questions, leave a comment below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you soon.